Welcome to Let's Talk, brought to you by the Hempfield Area School District. This is Jeff Krakoff, and we're speaking with Superintendent Tammy Walecki. Thanks for joining us. Hello. So we've had previous conversations with Mike Arnold from SiteLogic, um, with Jason Lochner, principal at Harold Middle School, and, and some of the things they've talked about where a lot of things have to change to get Harold up to speed as a modern school building. It's going to cost a lot of money. Um, Mike had also mentioned it's unusual for a school district with the enrollment, the size of of uh, Hempfield area to have three middle schools instead of two. Jason had spoken about it's actually going to be a, a good thing to even out class sizes, to have more consistent course offerings. Um, but from your perspective as superintendent, with all that said, if the plan goes through and Harold closes, how do you know that this is the right decision to make? First, allow me to say it's not an easy decision to make. We realize um, a huge impact uh, on many individuals. As, as we look at, at the student enrollment on a broad scale, we see that over the past 30 years, we have had over 2,000, um, we have 2,000 fewer students that, that attend our schools. Uh, we've closed two elementary schools, Bavard Elementary and East Hempfield Elementary were both closed. So that, that declining enrollment creates a need to, to give consideration. We, we certainly look to at our current enrollment, the elementary enrollment. Right now we have our lowest class size attending kindergarten, and that's with only 337 children. Okay. So as those children continue to move into the middle schools, we anticipate um, the low enrollment. We also, as, as you mentioned, Mike Arnold did share, there's a lot of needed Harold. Harold, of course, is, is a building that is... Um, in, in need of a lot of updates to bring it up to standard and to align with, with the other two middle schools. So those are all um, important considerations whenever we make a decision um, of this magnitude. Okay. So we know all the advantages if the school closes, cost standpoint, some academic reasons, but there's always a con side to every pro side and every decision. As you see it as superintendent, what are the cons? And as you're hearing from people in the community and parents, what are the cons and, and how do you address them? So we, we are listening and, and we have heard concerns around class size. And uh, as uh, Mr. Lochner had shared, we do have some variances in class size. So um, just as we're looking at moving children to the other two middle schools, we're also looking to move staff to those two middle schools. So as we can look to balance that class size, I know we have um, a math class that has 18 and another math class that has 28. So our goal is to make that a more reasonable balance yeah. um, with our class size. Transportation, that, that that's another huge concern I know for many parents. And whenever you look at a district, um, with the size of Hemfield area, our, our geography makes transportation a challenge, even with three middle schools. We already have students who um, have longer rides than others just because of where they live in, in regards to the location of the school that they attend. So we will continue um, to require our bus company to have bus routes that are no longer than 55 minutes. And, and I realize too, even 55 minutes is a long bus ride um, for children, especially whenever they have after school activities and other um, you know, things that they, they need to do in their school day or their, their day. So we recognize that and we'll continue to work with our transportation company to address that. Okay. So from everyone we've spoken to, the, the right decision for today is to do this and close Herald and consolidate. I wonder what happens down the road. You know, even though the demographic study shows enrollment has been declining, it is declining, we don't know what's going to happen down the road. What happens if there's a lot of building taking place and there's actually growth in the school district? Does this decision become a bad one when we look down the road? Well, first, it would be wonderful to have a lot of growth. Hemfield area has a lot of land, a lot of opportunity for growth. So when the feasibility study was completed, Core Architects worked with SiteLogic and they actually provided some potential additions for both Wendover and West Hemfield Middle. So those could be considerations. If the growth is such that either that's not sufficient or maybe it occurs in a specific um, location within the district, 
that's a wonderful opportunity. You know, there would be additional tax revenue with all this new growth and higher enrollment. You, you could build a new building, um, which would then better meet the needs of, of the children. Okay. Now, if Harold does close, what's going to happen to that building? Do you have any plans in the works? There, there are currently not plans. Of course, this decision is still um, to be made. And, and we know the building, um, should the consolidation occur, will continue to be used for the next three years um, to house the ninth graders. So there, there have not been finalized plans at this point. Okay. I know a lot of people in the community are wanting more transparency. You know, we all want more transparency from every institution in our lives, right? Right. But what do you say to a parent or or anybody else within the district that says, you know, you haven't been transparent enough with us? So I I would would share that we we are working and will continue to work for transparency in all on all aspects. So we have uh, made parents aware of the potential with um, parent letters. We did hold a public hearing. Um, we held a just an informational meeting early in the process. Um, this upcoming November 21st, we're going to be providing additional information um, at one of our board meetings. Uh, the Tribune Review has has provided some press coverage of several of our, our public board meetings where this information has been shared. Uh, our headlining Hemfield um, issue will contain an article as well. And our website uh, does, does contain all of the information that's been shared to date, as well as we continue to go forward. There's an FAQ document, and we'll continue to add to that document. Okay, so what's the rest of the process look like? You mentioned um, there, there's a, a meeting on Monday, November 21st. For, my understanding is there's a, there's a period between that last presentation and meeting and when there's an actual vote. How does this work? There is, yes. So um, we are required to hold a three-month, what's referred to as a cooling off period, and then the board will make a formal vote at that time. So we are looking at a date at February 21st, which is actually a Tuesday, um, to hold that public vote. So that will provide that three months from our November 21st to February 21st. Okay. And again, just reiterate, if anybody has questions or wants to see previous communications and presentations, uh, where do they find this? Additional questions. We're always happy that I can please email me, send any additional questions. We'll continue to update the FAQ. And also we will continue to update our website with the past information that's already there and any new information will continue to be added. So there is a link to the district website. Okay. And, and how do they find that on your website? I know sometimes these yeah. things aren't easy to find. You're right. You're right. We are going to keep it in our news section. So on the main page, there will be a link that will take you directly to that. Okay. Okay. So last question, do you have any final closing thoughts that you'd like to share with people within the district that might have concerns? I do. I do. You know, as I think about a decision such as this, there, there are logical aspects to the decision, right? We talked about enrollment. We talked about the condition of Herald. We talked about how it um, will provide equal um, course offerings. Mr. Lochner addressed that. Uh, we talked about how it will facilitate the high school renovation project. But on the other side of it, it's all the emotional um, considerations. And, and we, we've, we have given time to that and we'll continue to do that, especially if this um, decision comes to fruition we recognize the fact that it can become another transition for children, especially as we're um, the children that are currently in those grade levels that will need to go to Harold as a ninth grade um, if this decision, again, is, is approved. So transitions for children uh, as, as a parent, and, and all parents know as their child moved from elementary to middle, middle to high school, there's always that you know, feeling of anxiety and the unknown and you know not knowing the school or who will be in my class and their friends. And and we have always worked to support those transitions. We have have held orientations. Um, we've worked to provide some social events. We recognize this This will be a major change for, for families, for children, for staff, and that we are going to need to give extra effort and attention to the transitioning to assure that everyone um, finds the, the change to be as comfortable as what we can possibly make. Um, I also understand the transportation concern. I do. My my I, my daughter is a graduate of Hempfield area. Um, she had a bus 
ride that was 50 minutes. And, and I understand as a parent, the challenges that that creates, um, especially with those after school activities. And um, we, we, we get that. We, we certainly do and we'll work to be as supportive as possible. I know there are parents concerned with dropping a child off at elementary and then a child at middle and, and that window um, of time. And we'll certainly work with parents as well to look at how we can be supportive in that regard. So th there are so many pieces to this that impact uh, many individuals. So we just want everyone to know that, that we are listening and that we are um, going to be sensitive to all those areas as well. Okay. You, you mentioned there was this uh, frequently asked questions document that that is being added to. Is is it okay and appropriate for parents to ask questions during this nine this cooling off period? So yes, um, certainly through email, I'm happy to add additional questions to that FAQ document. And it actually was generated at the request of parents who okay. had questions, and we shared that we would respond in that manner. Um, also, any public school board meeting, there's the opportunity for public comment. So that that will continue during this time period as well. So we do want to continue to hear from parents. That's very important. So um, okay. we encourage the use of either of those. So if I wanted to email you a question, is it your email? Is it a different email where these questions are being collected? It, it could come directly to my email, okay. which um, is on the website as well. All right. Well, thank you very much. Lots of good information. I appreciate your time today. That was Superintendent Tammy Walicki. Thank you. Thank you.